Welcome everyone to the RC Craftsman Guild meeting. Um, everybody here, I, I just want to let everybody know here and on Zoom, a couple of things schedule wise. Um, next month, we do not have a meeting in January and July. It's typical that it's, it's just a steering committee meeting so we can plan for the year. August will be our summer party. So for people in town, Jack has graciously offered his house to have the party at and more information will follow. Um, the end of this month, June 25th and 26th is the show on Raycroft campus. And we do need help with our guild booth to sell raffle tickets um, for our fundraiser. So anybody that's in town that can help, uh, please contact the Arts and Craftsman Guild at gmail.com or Jack Eason, who is in charge of organizing that for us. And um, the last thing for Paul Speaks is, um, is uh, August 17th is a tournament on the Roycroft campus. And we're trying to have a guild booth for that. Um, and again, Jack is the person to contact if you can help. It's a Wednesday, correct? August 17th. Um, we will be selling our raffle tickets and pins and stickers for the guild. So thank you everyone. Our guest presenter is Paul Ferringer. He does beautiful sculptures and um, my name is Paul and a little bit of background on myself. I have no formal training. I'm um, actually environmental educator. I have been uh, at two degrees in environmental sciences. Arts. I founded my own organization of uh, spirits. Uh, I was a director of records. Recently retired, which gives me more time to do this. Um, and I should say semi-retired. Um, I'm still teaching um, the long substitute teaching at the middle school. So uh, the middle school will understand what I'm saying. And so this was kind of a side thing. I'm actually looking I never thought 10 years ago that I this sort of thing uh, because I was always in the workshop with my father since I was a little kid, teaching me how to make things out of wood. And I always thought if I was going to do any kind of craft, it had to do with wood. And that was, but probably about five, six years ago, I saw a sculpture made out of wood by Robin White, who is um, a choir artist from England. And I thought, that's beautiful. Uh, it almost brought the kid out of me because I've always read fantasy, science fiction when I was a kid. Um, I was always out in nature, playing out in nature. And so when I saw this wire fairy that he created, it's like, I, I have that. Now, the way I am, it's not like, okay, how much does it cost? No. How can I build that? That's why I'm always working with my hands doing something. So I decided I'm going to just try. I grabbed some wire, not knowing anything about the wire, and I just grabbed it and I started studying the sculpture, figure out how to do it. I tried twisting the wire together, which is really the right way. You cannot do it with your bare hands. I uh, want you to work with big wire. So I started inventing different tools, like this little gadget, which is just five holes in a dowel with some nuts and bolts on it. And this little gadget is that I can take this big wire like this right through here and start twisting it. Now, as I was twisting this wire, now you have to imagine I have a two car garage and I'm going across this two car garage, like 30 feet of wire going back and forth through here, twisting it. Um, it. It took a lot of strength, a lot of muscle, and I finally was able to test it down. See how heavy the wire is. So, um, I finally realized that um, I can make this. And I put together a skeleton. And from there, I was like, well, it's not a I can go on, I'm not sure what to do. And the whole skeleton sat in my workshop for about a year because I had no clue about going further. And I had to do with all these 
things in line with after a year, uh, I said I was going to try again. Now, this time I went back to look at uh, Robin White's sculptures on lines with more of an idea of how he was doing it. And he actually had some original videos on top. And I started watching those to see his technique. And I took a lot of ideas from his technique and I added a few of my own. And I started putting together my own fairy. And it turned out I actually took the first skeleton I scrapped. Uh, part, of, part of my first skeleton is in this guy, part of it's in this guy, uh, the other parts back there. So little pieces went here and there. Uh, and I started from scratch and I ended up making this sculpture over here, which is this area. And you may think, well, why would you start so big? Why not start small and work your way up? Well, I didn't plan on doing that. So I just wanted the one uh, that performed with it that's doing that. Birds love so much, we don't have the art put down. So instead, we did with my brother, who's an artist out of Seattle, Washington, a painter. Um, he said, do like we do in Seattle, paint the tree. So we painted our tree blue. And there's a nice little look from the tree, and that's not where I want it for a set. So I actually formed the stereo here to fit in the tree, and she stands in the nook, holding her arm up and leaning with one hand. Is actually against the slump of the tree. So I actually formed her around the tree. Now, the way I make pairs is you start out with a skeleton. So this is just several pieces of wire, four pieces here, uh, there's four pieces going down. It's actually two groups of four that are blended together so that you can actually get the form. And then you have to bend the legs. I always thought human you know, legs are straight, but as you study human form, uh, they actually bend in strange ways. So I made the skeleton out of this. You can pass that around to it if you want. So we're at all kind of guy. And the next step, we got to call that the skeleton stuff. Now we have the muscle. We have to have the muscle. So you take that wire, which is a heavy gauge wire. And you go down to a thinner gauge. And as you do the thinner gauge, you start wrapping it around. Now, with my smaller fairies, you only use um, one strand of wire. On um, the stereo over here, I use three strands of wire to go around to form the muscles. So you're basically building up from the skeleton. The final layer is the skin, which is a smaller gauge of wire. And there I was using on her uh, anywhere from 10 to 12 strands of wire in each group. And I had to imagine my garage uh, stringing this wire from one dowel all the way across the garage to another and back, forth, back, and forth. Um, my garage was a mess with wire all over the place. You have to twist the ends so that you can feed it through the muscle of the, of the um, structure. And then you finally um, get to the skin stage, and that's just feeding it through and wrapping around. And you don't just wrap around, you know, like that. You have to actually crisscross the layer before it does the thing. And this time where I would stop. Yes, sir. Can you use the 10 pieces? They all develop. They're all together. They're all together. Um, and you wrap it so that, and if you look closely at her, you can see the strands. You know, if, on the smaller ones, I only use two strands for the skin at a time. Um, and this is just muscle stage here in the beginning of um, the skin stage. Now, to make these, there are times where you just have to stop because it doesn't Something just doesn't look right and just have to step away. So it took me about a month to make uh, because I had to take the breaks. It's like, you know, just not looking right, something's wrong. And I would keep going, I unwrap, if it wasn't right, I'd wrap, and unwrap. And so I was like, I had to walk away. So I walk away for a day or two and then go back to it. So after you get the skin, the muscle, the skeleton, everything's better. Happy with her. If the marker, if that doesn't 
Mm-hmm. Oh, mm-hmm. oh, this is me. Uh, he has wire Do you mind if I took the Zoom people over to get a close up of oh, Mysteria? Yeah. Okay, and then I'll put it right back here. <laughs> so I'm going to take you over to see what he's talking about, Mysteria. And then I'll put you back on the pedestal. <laughs> you know, audio is hard, but we'll, we'll get some good uh, visuals hopefully for you. Here we go. So this is Wisteria. Just does not. Oh, that's cool. I want to work with galvanized. I've gotten into stainless steel. The lobbies are going to be outside. As you can see with the galvanized, it gets tarnished outside, which I actually like the looks of it. Okay, cool. This one here is made of stainless steel. Then at the end, um, I'll, we'll, we'll do a close up of everything. Yeah, I went backwards. I was staring out big. 
The next carry I made was a medium size one, which I had actually sold already. Um, I've made four medium size carries already. And then I got into the small one. This is recording. And I tried to compose this. I try not to put any of the pairings in the same pose. You can see how the wings are more simple. There's less detail on the small ones. I don't like how the hair comes in, so I started playing with hair and using different wires. That pair just comes in so much more. Needs what the girls here. We had a lot of strands and I wrapped, I wrapped a serious pair of hair around the broom handle to get that curl. After I wrapped it around the broom handle, I cut the ends of it so that uh, it opened up. So you have to tie all the ends together to uh, put the hair through the skull. The bottom you told, which I'll bring to it. Um, it's actually a screwdriver that I sharpened the end. I filed down. Starts up and make the holes so much, so much wire there, it's hard to get through. That's like that's a columns of uh, a screwdriver. Yeah. Yeah. Go around with a very sharp, you know, all like so all the columns and so on. So, uh, but I did start using uh, different types of wire for the hair, it just stands out better. So, this is a copper wire that I used on. Hush, I call her, so I went away from the, the um, flower name on this one. Uh, this one, I decided to try a ponytail. So I did a ponytail on this one, just to get a little different feel to it. And this is my latest. Okay, like I said, I want to do that. Yeah, interesting. I didn't know I did this. Mine This is um, brass, yes. Me too. Yes. For medium fairy, on the smaller ones, I just have the pieces of wire sticking out from the arm, and I bend the wire over to make the fingers. So many times where I'm unbending them because it's the wrong way. Flipping people off if one needs to fix. So, so I have to bend it over and unbend it so to get the right length on the fingers. With the medium fairies and all the large ones. Oh my God, how are you going to suffer? You have to make sure you make the right hand the left hand. So the way you bend the thumb makes it a right or a left hand. And then these get put onto the fairy as the skeleton. So when you look closely at her, you want to put her. You're going to see that the hand you know, is not just wire sticking out. Each finger is individually wrapped with a smaller gauge wire. Sorry, you can actually pass. So I ventured out, and because my wife's pottery shop is Black Raven Pottery, and I love ravens, I love important, as we call them, ravens, crows, rivers. Uh, they're so intelligent that I found it really great. And I studied a raven up close to see the dimensions of it, and I decided I'm not going to do the raven. Now, I had that wire left over from my first fail on making a fair. And I used that to actually go from the feet up in, across, and down again, and then there's another wire going across that from the tail up into the head. Then I started building the muscle around that, and then the feathers or the skin over that. Uh, I've tried wings. I don't like 
the way the wings are, I'm still working on the technique for wings um, to make them look more realistic. Uh, so that's why all my that's cool. groups have closed wings right now. I'm also playing around and trying to figure out how to make smaller songbirds. So this is a raven with the head turned. This is my first attempt at the raven. And I was told I'm not allowed to sell it. <laughs> <laughs> and this was my second attempt at a raven. Um, this one, I kept the head straighter. Uh, I had the tail fan out of the And after I worked on the ravens and I started working on the butterflies, I started venturing into trees. And I started making these different trees. Um, these are a lot of fun to make. And I actually studied the different trees on Pinterest where people were making them. And that's how I learned to call myself trees. And I discovered later talking to someone else who makes them, but I feel bad. I start with the leaves and I work my way down. Uh, a lot of uh, wire artists who make the wire trees start from the trunk and work their way up. And the leaves are the last thing they make. Um, so I do it backwards, but it works for me, you know? So I'm um, keeping with that technique. Maybe someday I'll try it the other way. And I think that the hardest part of making a tree, in my opinion, is trying to find the right object to mount it on. Uh, I like using natural things. Once again, I'm not an outdoors person. I like using natural things like wood. Found this old fence post. Um, it was in my backyard and it's all on the grounds. Our property is an old farm. And so I decided to grab it. I took the barbed wire off of it and cut it up. And I mounted a tree to it. And this is another part of that fence post. This one I played with a little bit more. Uh, besides just mounting a tree onto the fence post, I decided to give it a little more color to offset the, the uh, copper blending in. And I put some moss on it so that it kind of offsets a little bit. Now, fortunately, my, I do make silver trees and the gold ones are made on that green wire, um, but they've all sold and I didn't have a chance to make any other colors. So these are my copper ones. And they all start out like this. So this is just rounded wire. And I separate the brown wire by twisting it. And then I make the leaves. And I put them all together. It's just winding two together, then a group of two, and a group of two, and then together. And you keep just working your way down until you have a trunk, and then all the roots you have to wind separately. Um, I can make a small tree in about uh, two days. I make the leaves. How do I make the leaves? Um, I actually have another tool that I made, an old screwdriver. Um, that I start them to a point. Uh, it's actually a room I found as a medium um, size berries. And I use that to wrap. So I'll take one strand and I'll wrap it around there, nice and tight, pull it off the screwdriver, and I separate them using my pulling light weight. Then I do it by hand and just wind it around to form a little circle. That's one bunch of leaves. And then I put them all together, and then the final step is to shape the tree. And so I go through a lot of different shapes before I come across the one I like. So I'm turning it, and it's like this one is tough. I want it. So I kept moving the branches around, and I finally get where I like it in all of so I'll have it where I really like them at a certain angle, then I put that at a certain angle that I don't think where else I like it. I've just did it. I have taught how to make the trees to middle school kids. Um, Springfield Middle School had a summer camp. Uh, I 
I was told not to sign up for it, so I was interested in what it to be. Uh, and 10 kids in my group were in kind of freeze, and I thought this would be easy to teach them. And they all enjoyed it. It was my purpose, getting them to learn um, a little bit about art, a little bit about wire art. But everyone was curious, I was like, this is harder than I think, you know? Um, because the trees were, they were kind of misshapen, the leaves, they just couldn't make the leaves properly. Um, and some of them really like uh, others were just like, it's harder than I think. But I mean, these are most growers. They did their best, and to them, it was beautiful. And to me, it was actually beautiful. Yeah. Um, You can put pretty much any of the fairies outdoors. That's why I use the stainless steel. I mean, I obviously don't put the music box outdoors, uh, but any of the other ones, I started working with stainless steel because I wanted them to be a personal garden sculpture. Uh, this one actually came about a friend of mine. Uh, she saw these alien bugs get out of them. Chicken wire. Um, I think it was on Pinterest. And she wanted one. And so I decided, well, I'll just make her one. And after I made her one, I looked at it and I would put nice little fairy on top. So I made myself one. And I made the fairy to fit on top of her. And I wanted her to look like she was flying and just land on the ground. So it was a soft little Uh, the raven, I knew that the ravens were not going to be outdoors, so I made them out of um, galvanized steel. So these are galvanized steel, and then I painted them with the spray. Yes. Uh, the fairies are in the garden, right? Yes. Yeah. Yes, I actually had a dowel. Yeah, I, I had a dowel. You have about, um, I think it's like 10 pieces of hair, and you tie them together on the end so you can get it through the skull, and then you twist it once you get it in place so that the ends are fairly even. Then you twist it around the dowel, you stretch it out, pull the dowel out, and then you put the neck in. You start spreading them out, every little hair. I would have loved to have put more uh, hysteria, but the weight looks so much already. I think that. Uh, and if you go too light on them here for uh, the circle of that, then it just pops down. So you need a little bit of strength in the hair to keep it so that it's stiff enough to flow. Stay in place. And the birds, the birds walk right on I mean, they will sit right on the hair and bounce on them. <laughs> Any other questions? Any online questions? No, I don't see any questions online. If anyone has any questions online, feel free to type them in. Um, yes, I've got a question. Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Okay. I'm, I've had a lot of trouble hearing all of your presentation when you walk to the other side. You've been walking back and forth, so I missed some of your information. What do you use to color the wire? Um, some of the wire I purchased colored. Um, the, okay. trees, the trees are kind of the um, copper color because I use copper for those. Okay. Uh, the hair on the one fairy here. Next, I should call her a ballerina. She doesn't have wings, so she's not a fairy. Um, the mm -hmm. hair, I actually purchased the wire that color. The okay. Only, the only wire, the only wire that I actually changed the color of is on the ravens, and this I just use black spray paint. Spray paint. And okay. Don't look too close because needs, she, he needs to be repainted. Um, there are some parts that are getting a little worn. Okay. I just use spray paint on these, but I expected them to be indoors. Mm hmm 
Okay, thank you. Um, when you did the tree, as you said, you started at the top and then worked back to the trunk. Is that what you said? Right. So I would take with the trees. I was actually going to do a demonstration, but I figured no, I don't have time. Um, okay. I would take the wire and you would take one piece of wire. Okay. If I had a screwdriver or pencil here, I would show you. Um, I would go about a third of the way up. Oh, someone's uh -huh. for a pencil or something. Um, oh, that'll work. <laughs> and it's just for a demonstration. So. so I take one strand of wire. I know it's hard to see right here. Mm -hmm. And I go about a little less than half the wire. And okay. I take it around the pen. I just wrap it around really tight. And you have to make sure you don't cross it. And then you push it tight against it. And yeah, so this is so big, it's gonna be really big leaves, thank you. And now I have the start of the leaves and I'll just take, um, depends on the size of tree I'm making, but I'll use like 50 of these. So I'll make okay. 50 of these. And then after I get to that stage, I pull them apart just a little bit. Uh-huh, extend them, okay. And then depending on the type of wire, this is nice wire because I can just do it with my fingers. I'm pressing and pulling at the same time so that you get what looks like this. Mm -hmm. And it would be smaller circles if I had And then I just take and I start at the end, you have to make sure you get right side out. And then you just get those spirals into a circle. And there's your one leaf bunch. Now this okay. is really big leaves. I would use the smaller, uh, the pen was a little bit wide. So there's yeah. one leaf bunch. So I'll do this with 50 pieces of wire. We're gonna want a bigger trail of 60 or 70. <laughs> um, I'll do that with like 50 pieces of wire and I'll take two of the bunches and I'll start twisting those together. Um, I'll take two more bunches, twist those together and I'll have a pile of these sitting to the side. I'll take two of the bunches of two and I'll twist those together. So now I actually have four leaf bunches that I'm twisting together. Um, and then I'll take those four, twist them with another four. So now I have Age, and just keep working your way down. And it's actually going through my head what the tree is looking like while I'm twisting. Um, I have to do that so that I know, okay, do I want a branch coming out here? Do I want a branch coming out here? Do I want a big ruffled top? Uh, and that way I know exactly how far down. Sometimes I'll take a bunch of bunches and I won't twist, I'll twist them long and then I'll twist them so that they're like offset so that you get more of a feel for an actual real tree. Okay, thank you. Oh, you're welcome. Maybe someday I'll teach it here. Yeah. Everyone's interested, I can teach how to make trees. Uh, any other questions? Hmm. Well, thank you very much. Um, I, I appreciate being invited to show off my art here. Uh, look forward to seeing them again. Um, my, some of my pieces, most of my pieces, I should say, are for sale. Um, I sell them online. And I also sell them over at my wife's pottery shop, which is my store on the right now. Yeah, I'm here, Black Bear Pottery. Uh, online, it is, um, if you actually go to my wife's pottery website, and they stole part of her store, and you can buy them right there. Uh, or you can go to the Enchanted Woods. Enchanted Woods, I sell fairy doors too. I sell them in the Brittany. Um, you have to have a way for these guys to get into them. So <laughs> I make fairy doors too. The kids love them. Uh, thank you very much and have a great night. Thank you very much, Paul. That was great. Very good. So we're going to show the Zoom people close up of your. Uh, you ready, everybody? Yeah, feel free to. Yeah.
And um, you see the trees? Mm -hmm. uh, you know. The enchanted the enchanted And there's some plus. And here's some smaller fairies. The medium tart, see, that's the best. Oh, yeah. 